Start of the second quarter, Scrabin County with a 21 to nothing lead on Laney. And the Wildcats will be kicking it away to start the quarter. And a high snap, trouble on the snap, and disaster for the Wildcats. Well, bad just went to worse. And Jarvis Washington couldn't handle the bad snap, and the Gamecocks are going to have it first and goal just like that. Well, they are starting the, the field position pretty good here. They're in the red zone. Let's state it down for our first uh, 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 Augusta Auto Auction sideline report of the game in Matt Lane. John. Yeah, kind of coming into this game, we knew uh, it, it was going to be very difficult for Laney going against uh, so many great players from Screven County. So far in the game, though, until that last snap there, Mario Williams, the punter for Laney, doing a great job of getting the kicks off really quickly to really keep Screven from getting uh, many extra yardages or even like a special teams touchdown. But right there, as you saw the snap going over his head, the first one so far for the young punter doing a good job so far in this game. All right, thanks, Matt. As the uh, touchdown or the attempted uh, pass was incomplete. Yeah, Lowe and uh, Johnson was out of bounds when he caught it. First quarter stats from Nathan Edwards. The rushing game definitely favoring Screvin. 150, as you see the pass play here on the uh, instant replay. 150 yards for Screvin on the ground. Laney with 14 passing yards. Laney leads with that nice 40-yard pass. They have 56 to 18. Total yards, 168 for Screvin, 70 for Laney. Both teams have one turnover. On the carry is Ben Bunbury keeping it and flags from everywhere. He'll battle his way down inside the five yard line. Well, this is the first six years. You got holding on the offense. Got to just stab him, Nathan Edwards. <laughs> but I have a hard time believing they're running nine penalties in that quarter. <laughs> oh, wait. I, that, it was four for 30. It was 10 penalties. <laughs> Gamecocks will retreat on the penalty. Yeah, penalties uh, four for Ooh. 30 against Screvin, six for 32 against Laney in that quarter. And as Nathan pointed out to us, that's those, those are the ones that weren't declined. Yeah. Nine penalties alone in the first quarter. It just seemed like, yeah, a lot of flags thrown. That's 10-yarder on the uh, Gamecocks. So now so they'll be second and 20. This is the point in the second season where you want to iron some of that stuff out. Now, yeah. a lot of teams haven't been in practice as much because – School was out for the hurricane, evacuees being here and things like that. Bunbury with moves and gets back to oh, close to the original line of scrimmage, maybe a yard shy. And call it uh, third down at the 11. Mario Williams made the tackle. I checked that. It was 16 with the tackle. That's JT Taylor. JT Taylor, Yeah, Bunbury, good athlete himself. And, again, he's another one where even though he's the quarterback, you got C.J. Wright and Taquan Johnson getting so much attention, but Munbury put up big numbers last year and is off to a great start this year already with six touchdowns through the air, four on the ground. Third down and goal. So the Gamecocks third and goal from the 11-yard line. Bunbury will again keep it, but that play is going to be blown dead. Uh, stop me if you've heard this one. Flag down. Yeah. And again, the Gamecocks going the wrong way. Or the right way if you're the uh, Wildcats. Well, they faked it to the big fella, which gave Bunbury a pretty good opening around the right side. But again, flags down, so it'll negate that play. That is the third flag of this quarter alone. We are less than two minutes in. <laughs> so it'll be. Third and goal once again, and again, Bunbury will keep. Bunbury trying to get to the corner, but there's a lot of red shirts in the way. Hey, guess what, folks? Flag down. They get flags down. Holding. Oh, my. Holding against the game class. Keep in mind, folks, later in the game, Matt will introduce you to our Ray Guy Award punters of the game. That should happen somewhere around 1 o'clock in the morning. <laughs> You'll stay with us. Yeah, that, it'll be past their bedtime. They won't be able to be there. <laughs> they won't be able to stay up with us. Oh. The Augusta Sports Council presents that each week for us. And, of course, they present the college punter of the year, the Ray Guy Award, named for the Thompson Great. Has Scriven had the punt this year? <laughs> yeah, the Ironman Triathlon coming up this Sunday. You, you ready? 70.3. Got to pull yeah. hammy. Oh, that's a shame. Really looking forward to it. <laughs> Pull Miami on the way up. Pull <laughs> Miami scary. on the way up this, to the booth tonight. Third and goal from the 15. This is Robertson and no room to run. Hey, look at there, AB. You see that? Uh, neither, team down. Wears, neither team wears yellow, and there's yellow on the field. <laughs> this is, we, you know, we hate to joke about it, folks. This is, uh, this we've is had a lot of penalties. Unbelievable. 
That's it goes three back straight to, flags on three straight plays. We had a game a few years back, and Nathan knows what I'm talking about, between Glen Hills and Hepsiba, where there were about 37 penalties, I think, in the game. We're on pace Combined, for yeah. close to that. We're on pace, yeah. Here's the difference, though. That was the game, I think, we told you where we had an error with the equipment from the, the, the company that was doing the games out of Atlanta. Uh-huh. So after the game, oh, Bill Hoppin that's had to right. sit in the van and recall, recall. the game. Oh, Bunbury going to try to throw over the middle and under throws his man. He was looking for Jonathan Roberts diving in the end zone, threw it behind him and too low, and it'll be a fourth down situation for the Gamecocks. Well, here's the scary thing for Laney. They're down 21 nothing, and Bunbury has been off tonight. Probably mm-hmm. the worst game, well, definitely the worst game he's had this year. Just hasn't looked good on his throws. He's been really off target. Uh, he's third in our area with, in passing with 464 yards, but just 18 so far, and that yeah. was on the one catch. He's one, of five. he's one of five passing, Nathan's telling us. So coming into the game, completing 56% of his passes, right now completing 20% in this game. So a nice stand by the Laney D. And I was I was a down off. That's my fault. I got lost in all the flags. Well, here's so it the crazy Laney thing, though. That was a good stop because Screvin had the ball first and goal yeah. on, you know, to start the possession. And instead, it'll be the Wildcats starting from their own 22 and throwing behind uh, Jalen Lovett. Incomplete. 17. Quarterbacks get in a real rush on that play. And I look, I know you want to get it out there in a hurry, but that had a lot of zip on it. You got to get it where the player can catch it. And heads up by Eli Broad next to pick it up and run to the end zone thinking maybe it might have been a backwards pass, but it was not. Four wide now for the uh, Laney Wildcats. And here comes, here comes Screvin again. And wow. absolutely nowhere to go. Watch watch this play from Kayshawn Robinson from the top of your screen. And, uh, you know, I feel for the freshman here because watch the, watch the top of your mm, screen. Look at that. Perfectly. Oh, my goodness. That, Kayshawn Robinson is a player. That's an Augusta Pain Center hit of the game nominee, I would imagine. We've had three already in this game. Stringer was the ball character for a ball carrier for Laney. Like yeah. I said, a good looking freshman, but that time he went up against a player who's not only talented but read the play perfectly. So Laney going in reverse here, third and twelve for the Wildcats after the big stop on defense. Again, four wide. Sumter out of the gun. Guess what, folks? <laughs> you, you can't make this up. That'll be a five-yard uh, offsides penalty on Screvin County. Mm, mm, mm. Make it third and seven. They need seven. Sumter looking for that, and then some, and that's just going to be into no man's land. Uh, Jonathan Roberts back there playing center field for Screvin County. And it'll bring a fourth down situation for the Cats. Now, last time they attempted to punt, it did not go so well on a bad snap to Williams. Uh, at a, right about this same spot on the field. Yeah. We've been down in the same corner for, for seemingly... 15 minutes now. Yeah, Matt is pointing out that he doesn't see the punter. There we go. Mario Williams <laughs> getting the punter for, for Laney. Anytime y'all are ready. And now we'll have a timeout on the field. That is a Napleton Infinity of Augusta timeout. So, A.B., let's... Uh, Mention our first scholar of the game now. Seems like as good a time as any. Yeah, absolutely. Of course, each week we honor our scholars of the game. And uh, tonight from Laney High School, the home team, it's Nick Clifton. Uh, Nicholas Clifton for Laney. Uh, 3.48 GPA, a starting right tackle for the Wildcats. And uh, congratulations. I actually checked that. That is, I believe that is uh, Screvin County's Nick Clifton. I apologize. I was looking at the uniform, just automatically assumed Laney, but because they're in. Uh, uh, red as well. Uh, that is Nick Clifton of Screvin, though, scholar athlete for the uh, Gamecocks, wears number four, a senior for this team, plays on both sides of the ball. 
and uh, also carries an outstanding GPA. So congratulations to our Scrubbing County Scholar of the Game, Nick Clifton. And actually, yeah, Clifton not in the game tonight. He's uh, in Stru he's There he is. Yeah, you can see on, him right there, the shorts. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, he seems to be in good spirits, but uh, – I think he's over there listening to some arithmetic and stuff like that. Oh, I would imagine he's listening to Game Night Live, the live stream. <laughs> well, he heard his name. He was happy. Absolutely. So the uh, Wildcats will finally kick, and a good kick. Fair catch called for near midfield, and the Gamecocks will set up in Laney territory at the 48-yard line. Kim Hunter on the fair catch for Screven County. Well, if you think uh, Laney's having a rough night, West Side right now is having a really rough night. Jefferson County leads Westside 56 to nothing in the second quarter. Mm. And those Westside Patriots will face these Laney Wildcats one week from tonight. We will be in, uh, well, you won't be, but I'll be in Aiken next week. Yeah, We're South Aiken versus next Aiken, week, the Battle of Aiken. On a uh, little golf trip. Can't beat that. There's right. Look at this Goodness guy. gracious. Still on his feet. Yeah, they actually the never 40. brought him down. No, they blew the play dead at the 39-yard line. The ref just said, okay, five people are on him. I'll call it. That's going to be real close to a first down, and I believe he's got one. Well, he was really impressive at the Border Bowl preseason uh, 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 combine. Mm -hmm. uh, as a matter of fact, he was automatically put in the Border Bowl. They were able to, you know, the coaches were able to automatically put somebody in the game. And he was so impressive at the workouts. With, again, with his size to be that quick, uh, very impressive in the workouts. He was automatically put on the team by J.B. Arnold of Jefferson County, who's the Team Georgia coach this year. Well, they spotted him a yard shy of the first down, and uh, this may come as a great surprise. Five yards. Five down. Some other scores from around the area. A little bit of a surprise how easy it's been for Evans tonight. That looked like it was going to be a close game on paper. Evans and Baldwin. Evans right now having their way, 28 zip at halftime. And also, how about Richmond Academy a couple of weeks ago? We had them on Game Night Live. At that point, they were undefeated 3-0. Mm -hmm. They had knocked off Aiken, looked good on offense. Last week, they had it handed to them by Greenbrier. And right now, they trail 20 to nothing to a Grovetown team that's been really up and down this year. So, Richmond Academy struggling a bit. The ball carrier is Hunter on second and six from the 45-yard line. And he'll pick up about five yards. And that'll bring up third down for the Gamecocks. Third and short. Another good game tonight around the state. Matter of fact, in the entire state, Burke County and Effingham County, two very good teams. Effingham County lost by one earlier this year to Thompson. Right now they trail Burke County 14-12. to 12. All those scores thanks to hard work of Nathan Edwards. And they said he did pick up the first down there, so it's going to be a first down at the 38-yard line. You know, Coach Duncan not going to be happy with a lot of the penalties, but he's got to be pretty pleased with how they've looked. There's Wright again inside the 30 and made another man miss right inside the 20. Keep your pants on. Well, the <laughs> pants does. might come down, but he won't. It's, easy. <laughs> it's a family show, CJ. That is one way to make the tackle. Just pull his pants down. Maybe they call it. Uh, he picks I up another you, big first down. That kid is super nimble yes, to be is. that size. I'm just blown. I, I keep mentioning I'm just blown away by it. I mean, this kid's 285 pounds, breaking the run to the outside. And then, of course, he's so big that once you get a hold of him, I mean, he just, that guy had a great leverage on him. He's just not going down. Finally, he's like, all right, pants are coming down. I'll go down. <laughs> that puts the Gamecocks inside the Augusta Technical College red zone. Uh, trouble on the snap. Yeah, fumble. And it looks like the Gamecocks fall on Hunter. Johnny on the spot there to keep possession for Scrabbin County. Well, they, they care a lot of uh, on their uh, formations. They have their back so close up mm -hmm. to the run, to the quarterback, and that time as Wright went through, they were going to make a fake, and I think Wright uh, knocked the ball out of Bunbury's hands. It looks like they got back to the original line of scrimmage. So, Screven County, the Gamecocks, 2002 state champs. Of course, Laney's got a couple of state titles in their history back in the 60s, 61 and 66. It is right on the carry, right up the middle, right just dragging guys with him up near the six-yard line. I mean, what a weapon to have. 13 yards on that carry. What a weapon to have. When you need, you know, it's not when you need one or two yards, when you need four or five yards. <laughs> and that'll put uh, the Gamecocks first and goal now. Yep, in the Augusta Technical College red zone where they have spent a lot of time tonight. Now, last time they got down here, though, remember, they, Laney held them out of the end zone. First and goal from the six. The ball carrier is Hunter. 
Hunter through the middle. Hunter, touchdown. Well, the fourth rushing touchdown, two for Wright, one for Hunter, and one for the quarterback, Bunbury. There's Hunter, the tailback. And Screven County extends the lead now to 27 to nothing with the PAT forthcoming. And the Laney faithful, uh, this is, a, I think, what they might have feared before this game. Well, last year, keep in mind, Laney opened the season 0-5, mm -hmm. playing this same schedule. But then they went 5-0 and and made the playoffs uh, once they got into region, you know, against the other Richmond County schools. And that's what they're hoping they can do again. Matter of fact, one of the uh, the PA announcer here said, hey, we're banking on that. The problem is when you graduate when you graduate 22 seniors, mm -hmm. uh, you might not be able to bank on that. Makes it tough. 28-0 now, Screven County leads Laney. Six minutes and change to play here in the first half. Don't forget, at the conclusion of tonight's game, we will be naming our McDonald's offensive and defensive players of the game. And right now, there are a handful of nominees on the Screven County side. This is Mario Williams on the return for Laney out to about the 22-yard line. That's where the uh, Wildcats will start. And, of course, each week we uh, honor those players, and it's great to get to see the players so happy down on the field after the game. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, Matt Lane, of course, will be down there to interview the guys. I've never retweeted quite as much as when I'm tagged in a tweet about the McDonald's player of the game. There you go. People are passionate about their high school football. So here come the Wildcats. So they need about 80 yards. They need about 28 points. And they'll start through the air. First time we have seen... Jay Graham uh, through the air, and he'll get about three or four tough yards. Well, it's going to be this region's going to be kind of interesting to see what happens. You got Harlem, a much improved team, but Screven County and Jefferson look to be the two best teams. And everybody's circling November third on their calendar. Exactly, they will go heads up right now. Jefferson is just crushing West Side, and I don't know if this Screven County team shows up. Jefferson may win the game. Because right now they've played a little bit sloppy. They've made some mistakes. Bunbury has not been effective throwing the football. They're going to need everything clicking on all cylinders to beat J.B. Arnold's squad. Second and eight. And a little trickery. And let's see. Oh, well, he had his man back there. Luther Reed was wide open but underthrown. Well, Screven bit. Unfortunately, the pass was severely underthrown. Well, you were talking about this Screven County team, and as, as good as they have looked to us, yeah. Uh, Coach Ron Duncan telling our guys before the game that, that, that he, he doesn't think they're anywhere close to as good as they can. So there's yeah. a lot of things to work on. This team was 11 and 2. Third down. People Third think down. They're better this year. The numbers are great, but this team we're watching tonight, yeah, they're up there, but they're playing sloppy, as I said. Bunbury's been off target, uh, even though they've, you know, they've got athletes on that defense. Laney's been able to move the ball a little bit. And that this team, if they play just like this, Jefferson County is going to be a tough team to mm -hmm. beat. Now, that doesn't mean they can't play better and beat Jefferson County. They sure can. They're ranked higher. Well, Jefferson the Warriors County ranked seventh right now. Look awfully good tonight, up 56 to nothing against Westside. So third and eight, the penalty was declined. Sumter needs eight and incomplete, and it'll be a kicking situation for the Wildcats. And who was there? Desha, uh, Kayshawn Robinson, mm -hmm. of course. Tell you, very impressive player, Robinson. So with just under six minutes to play in the first half, the Gamecocks will get another shot at it. I just hadn't had a lot of heard a lot of recruiting traction on him, and I'm just after seeing him in person this year because we didn't see Screvin last year. We mm -hmm. saw him two years ago, and seeing him in person, man, I if I'm one of the smaller schools in Georgia, you know, Mercer and those schools, wow, I would be taking a serious look at this kid. Well, you see the Laney band. Uh, getting into formation there at the top of your screen. If you want some entertainment, stick around for halftime. If you've never seen the Laney Wildcat marching band, they're really something. Almost got to the kick. And it'll take a good Laney bounce and out of bounds in Screven County territory at the 45. And that's where the Gamecocks will start. Well, Screven will get the ball back here with plenty of time. 540 to go in the first half. And already up 28 nothing. As I said, we talk about, they haven't been clicking really tonight, but they're still up 28 nothing because one thing that has been effective is their ground attack. 
approaching 200 yards if they're not there already. And already with four rushing touchdowns, two by C.J. Wright, one by Kim Hunter, and one by the quarterback, Armani Bunbury. And they're at 211, so they're already over 200 yards rushing here in the first half. Again. Yeah, Nathan's pointing out their average starting field position is, is just amazing. So the uh, Gamecocks will start from their own 45. Dangerous pass and read beautifully by Jalen Lovett. And it'll be thrown for a loss, but uh, flagged down. Well, they're going to call holding on, I think it's Taquan Johnson, even Chris oh. McCarthy in the truck said, yeah, number two. And look, that's what, you don't get away with it out there. You get away with it at the line of scrimmage sometimes, but not out there in front of their F. Yeah, and you just saw he had a chunk of the jersey. And... And again, also, Taquan Johnson, who's the most heavily recruited player on this team, one catch for 18 yards. He's dropped a pass. Mm -hmm. he, he's also there, made a you know dumb play with a, a hold. So this team not clicking on all cylinders. They just got the athletes to be up big right now. And I don't think the quarterback was ready for the snap on that play. No, Bunbury trying to make something out of thing. Another flag and overthrew his man. And it's going to be another hold. Two straight penalties now as Screven County's going the wrong direction. Uh, Holding on the white. Play here is Bunbury stepped up. And I don't know what happened here. The throw kind of, yeah, it did come out of his hand kind of funny there as he had a player open in the middle of the field. So, Coach Ron Duncan, look, I, you know, you're happy when your team's winning, but the coaches are perfectionists yeah. and they this has they, not been perfect yeah I was by far you're right far from it and he's going to stress that because again they've got games coming up they got Harlem hey Harlem is this year if you want to see two talented running backs Harlem's got it mm -hmm. I mean Harlem's got AJ Brown who's fifth or sixth in the state and rushing right now they've got a freshman named Cam Garnett who one of the best freshmen I've ever seen well, we're going to uh, learn a lot about Harlem next week yeah. they were they, they were impressive against Glen Hills on game night live a week ago so on second and 22, the uh, second and 40, I should say, which you don't hear every day, yeah. uh, Eli <laughs> on the reception for Screven County. And another flag <laughs> now. <laughs> on the offense. It gonna be, uh, it's going to be second and like 50. Hey, coach! Uh, somebody take a picture of the scoreboard. Actually, just take a picture of the bottom right-hand corner of your screen when we put the down and distance up. You don't see this ever. Well, it's going to be. Yeah. Uh, they mark it off. Again, we can't see a darn thing from the press box. All we have is a fogged up window. Well, they've got it second and 22. Yeah, they haven't updated it. Was it was second and 40. So It'll be second be and 45. Second and 45. <laughs> from the Screven County 9. Yeah, uh, yeah that, that part of the scoreboard <laughs> doesn't go to 45. <laughs> there it is. Now it is second and 45. And just, just fling it. There he goes. And incomplete, and another flag, and I think they're going to get bailed out on a pass interference call. It's not going to be a first down. Though. No, it won't be a first down, but they'll. Second <laughs> 45. Well, if nothing else, we've seen a little bit of history tonight, yeah, fellas. Yeah. I'm going to do that. It is pass interference. We're going to. Yes, sir. Uh, the PA announcer tonight, Charles McNeil, said. Uh, Oh, yeah. The little trivia question. John During Mark the break, got right, by the way. Uh, and, the, and the question was, what is the significance of Laney's homecoming win over Screven County in 2006? It was 12-7. to 7. They yeah. beat him. And I was thinking back, and John immediately says, first game at this stadium. And it's right. They didn't open the season here. Right. But their homecoming game is when they open the stadium. I remember it like it was yesterday because we had it on football Friday night. It is second and it 30 second, now. But they have first. It should be second down. Yeah, the scoreboard had it first down, but they it's second and 30. And uh, another flash. <laughs> now it's second and 30. I, you know what? Hey. Can we go back to Andy Griffith? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let's do the play-by-play -play for that. <laughs> well, Barney comes in. Isn't My it? goodness. Ron. <laughs> Ron Duncan and Rob McFadden are going to have a field day with these guys at practice on Monday. Uh, on first and 30, throwing and picked off by J.T. Taylor. And a big play and a much-needed play by this Laney defense. 
Well, I said they needed turnovers. They've got them, and they're still down big. But that's the second interception of the night for Bunbury. And both times he just threw it into coverage, hoping his offensive guy would make a play. And Taylor is just right there. And actually, you know, there was a safety over the top as well. Well, Armani Bunbury came into this game meeting just 26 yards to become the career yardage leader for Screven County High School. He still only got 18, and we've got five minutes to go in the second quarter. He might break the passing records, but I, I'm going to go out on a limb. I don't know this for sure, but I got a feeling the rushing records are all held by Audra Grace. I don't know if y'all remember that name, but Audra Grace, one of the great running backs in the history of the state uh, at Screven County. Wildcats will have it in. Oh, no. Wildcats have it inside Screven County territory, but not for long as the uh, uh, the uh, ball is dropped by Mario Sumter. And we talked about at the outset, A.B., we had uh, a shower here before the game started, a couple hours yeah. before the game started. And the field, uh, we were, I was down there during the lightning delay. A lot of water down there. Yeah. Slippery bay, uh, football. You can see yeah, the, you can see the water the, right even, there. Yeah, and even coming into the stadium, the areas where, where it's trampled on and walked on a lot is just muddy and slush, basically. And by the way, that was C.J. Wright with the sack, the big defensive tackle, much more of a run stopper. But that time with the fumble, he was able to get back there and get something. Loss of nine brings up second and 19. I don't know how good this total defense is for Screvin, but I do know that C.J. Wright, a couple other guys, including Keishon Robinson, are, are players. Trips right for the Cats. The man in motion is Jay Graham, and the give is to Mario Sumter. Actually, he's the keeper, but he's – Lost his footing at midfield. Got about up to the original line of scrimmage. Call it third and ten. Kendrick Cox, another good player there. He is 15 right in the middle of your screen. He actually got a hand on the quarterback there. Watch this play by Cox. If he doesn't get him, that's a big gainer. Because it was a well-executed play. They faked it. C.J. Wright dropped back in coverage, and you see Cox was able to get the right foot of Mario Sumter. How about dropping your 285-pound defensive tackle back in pass mm -hmm. coverage? That's what Scrabbit just did on that. He's been impressive all night. They need 12. Well set up screen. And it is Stringer. Oh, good run. And the freshman will take it up to about the 31 yard line. And that's going to be good enough for a Laney first down. Hey. Wait. Flag down. Flag down. Never mind. Well, that's what I get for. We were talking about how good Cameron Garnett. How about this good looking freshman? That's the second big play of his that's negated, though, by penalty. That'll be a first down for the Wildcats. Oh, it is on Screvin, so yeah. that play not negated. I think he forgot he threw the flag. <laughs> and okay, is it a sideline penalty? Is that what we got? We got a conversation. I like this. Hold it, Oscar, hold it, hold it, hold it. It's going to be fun to watch him the next few years. Yep, other sideline warning on the Gamecocks. First down. So after all that, it'll be first and 10 from the 33-yard line for Laney. And here comes and the blitz. here come the Gamecocks again. Sumter gets rid of it quickly, but threw it behind Luther Reed. He had to get rid of it. If you don't game plan for Screven County, you're in trouble. If you don't know those blitzes are coming almost every play because those guys are flying in there. And if you don't have the right play called, you're going to get crushed. And Laney, luckily for them tonight, about half the time, has had the right play call. Well, the screen passes have been effective. Yeah. And the quick outs. But, man. Yeah, just Nathan pointing out, they're not going to be able to do that. I tell you what, what Jefferson County does have. They have two excellent quarterbacks. The, they got a kid named Jenkins and a kid named Hales. They split them up, and both those guys can put up numbers. They've got excellent receivers led by Ty King, who's coming off an eight-catch, 195-yard, three-touchdown game last week. Second and 10, and it's going to be third and 11. There's Kendrick Cox again. I'm telling you, Cox, Robinson, and C.J. Wright, and also – Another player that we mentioned a few times tonight, 44, Treston Jamison. Another good player on this defense. That was Chad Welcher with a loss of one. First time we've called his name tonight. So, so call it third and 11, maybe a long 10. The freshman Stringer's back in there, 28. Oh, they're going to say he lost four yards on the play. 
I can't wait to see by the time they're seniors, Cam Garnett, Stringer, see what these freshmen turn into. Like Wild, we've seen the last two weeks. You bet. Wildcats need 14. They'll try through the air, and Sumter heaves it down the right sideline, and nobody was even looking at the football. And it'll be a fourth down kicking situation. Well, he might go for it. Heck, why not? You're in this position on the field. Well, yeah, 2-12 to go. You're down 28. You know, trying to make something happen, maybe get a big play. Pass was intended for Jamonte Anthony. And back there on the coverage was Kim Hunter for the Gamecocks. Laney, region champs in 2013 and 2015. Prior to that, you got to go back to the days of J.K. Sav. Those teams in 2003 mm -hmm. and 2004 were excellent. J.K. Sav was, matter of fact, he's back in the area coaching. Coaching over at Aquinas, if I'm not mistaken. Eric Parker did a great job with those teams. Yeah. What are you doing? Oh, As Hunter's going to pick it up and on the bounce and run and take it up near midfield to the 46. Well, we got another flag, so let's see, uh, see what that's all about. Parker, of course, now doing a great job down at Burke County. We'll see them later this year against Thompson on November 3rd, I believe, game nine. Maurice Page made the tackle at the end of the play, but I don't know if the penalty was before that on a block of some kind or if it was on him at the end of the play. He sort of threw the runner out of bounds, but it is going to be on Stratton. Right? So Gamecocks will that'll negate what was about a 25-yard right, return. Stop. That's one of those as a coach. If you're going to take that chance, son, you better make something mm -hmm. out of it. Well, we saw that week two, uh, it, the Richmond Academy Aiken game. Same yeah. thing happened, and he ended yeah. up turning it for a touchdown. But not to be this time as the Gamecocks will retreat. The coaches are going crazy. Yeah, you can hear the, the coaches. The sideline about they the wanted a collar. horse collar. And I don't know if it was a horse collar as much as maybe a late hit because he grabbed him. But I thought he had his jersey. I wasn't sure, and he threw him late, but no call. And here goes, well. It's E.G. Robertson yeah. making something out of nothing, still on his feet up near midfield. He was dead to rights after a two-yard gain. That was a heck of a run. And he's going to end up picking up 21 yards. Again, he's a player we hadn't talked about much. So that was a heck of a run. And you mix him in there. You got Hunter. You got Wright, Bunbury. Johnson, they got weapons. Gamecocks go in a hurry now. It'll be right up the middle, picking up six more yards as the clock ticks under two minutes. A minute 47 left here in the first half. Well, and we have a Napleton Infinity of Augusta timeout. We'll take it with them with the Gamecocks leading 28 to nothing on game nine. On second and four, the carry is E.G. Robertson around the left side. Robertson, 20, 15. 10, 5, touchdown, E.G. Robertson. Or maybe not. There's a flag down back near the line of scrimmage. And he's, you can see which way he's pointing. And that's not going to be a touchdown. Mm, 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 mm. Richmond County's changed the rules. They're paying per flag now. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, my goodness. So that'll negate what was a 44-yard touchdown run by E.G. Robertson. Yeah, he's looked good on this series. Unfortunately, like for him, another one called back. Yep. He just looked good on this series. Again, the guys who haven't really stood, Bunbury and Taquan Johnson, who kind of two of this three-headed monster offense, and they've struggled tonight. Yet Ron Duncan's squad still up four touchdowns. So not only is it not a uh, touchdown, it's not a first down, and now they need nine on second down. So who do you go to? Well, it's going to be a keeper for Bunbury, and he's got a big chunk of it out of bounds at the 22-yard line. Well, that fake to right is devastating. C.J. Wright, or excuse me, uh, Bunbury, the best fakes we've seen so far this year from a quarterback. As you see, I mean, everybody went to right, and that left of just a huge gaping uh, area on that left side for Bunbury to run. 27-yard pickup and a first down for Screbin County as they try to move quickly here with 85 seconds left to play in the first half. And they're moving a little bit too quickly, I believe, for the Wildcats, who are going to call timeout. That is a Napleton Infinity of Augusta timeout by the Wildcats as they try to keep Screbin County out of the end zone. 125 to play. 125 to play here in the first half with Screbin County leading 28 
to nothing. This is a, two programs that have both produced their fair share of great players over the years. You mentioned Screven County was a state champion in 2003. That same night, Thompson also won a state championship. I remember that night well because both games were too far away for me to get to. So you know what I did that night while two of our area teams were playing? I was getting ready for football Friday yeah. night that night. De decorated my new office. <laughs> we was back when we had the old building yeah. downtown. Yeah. I had got a new office the day before. Put the Thompson game was on TV. There you put go. that on. That Thompson nice team night. I knew very well. That was the team led by Deion Palmer at quarterback, DeMarco McNair at running Brinkley's. back. The, you had the, the two defensive ends, mm -hmm. Casper and Jasper Brinkley, but the best player on the defense was Danny Verdun Wheeler, who yep. played at Georgia. I know him very well. Yeah, you had it. That was a loaded Thompson squad for sure. They went 15 and 0. Fresh set of downs for the Gamecocks. You saw the flag, so don't waste your energy there, Armani Bunbury, because you're coming back. So two touchdowns called back on this drive alone. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We have game. Yeah, we've got games holding. around the state in the fourth quarter. We're not at halftime yet. <laughs> And Burke County uh, leads Effingham 21 to 12. That's a good ball game. Two good teams. Matter of fact, Effingham County local fans might remember, and that is the team, the real controversial Evans uh, uh, victory in the state oh, yeah. semifinals. Yeah. Uh, Evans beat them in a close game, uh, but that was the game where Evans was deemed to have been using illegal equipment, a headphone receiver, and the helmet mm -hmm. of the quarterback Craig Casty. They were uh, fined, or excuse me, they lost down 15 yard penalty, and then. Uh, the GHSA overruled it and just dis and disqualified them from the playoffs. They had to forfeit that win. The interesting thing, the starting center on that team was Buddy Holder for Evans. Hmm. He's now the head coach at Effingham County. Wow. Yeah. So uh, Terry Holder's oldest like son. It all comes full circle. It does. Circle life, John. Circle life. Circle life. Another that Effingham County is a good team though. But right now, Burke County up 21-12 in the fourth. <sighs> it's an unsportsmanlike uh, conduct penalty on Scraven County. So they're going to march that back. You know, the, you can't uh, fault the officials because it's happening and they're throwing the flag. I mean, they got to throw the flags, but wow, a lot of them. All the way back to the 43 yard line. That's gonna be first and 33. We already had a, a second and 45 in this period. Now we've got a first and 33. Yeah, yeah. Nathan will literally celebrate his birthday here because it will be midnight before he leaves. 77 seconds left to play in the first half. Bunbury uh -oh. fakes, uh -oh. pumps, loads, throws, complete. It is Taekwon Johnson touchdown, Scriven County. Well, sometimes you say, sometimes you say that was easy. That was pretty easy. Hey, and guess what, guys? Everybody listening, no flags. <laughs> Very key. Are you sure? <laughs> we think. So that is a 33-yard touchdown pass from Bunbury to Tyquan Johnson. And with that pass, as we mentioned earlier, uh, Bunbury becomes the all-time career passing yards leader for Screven County High School. When you think about the players that have come through Sylvania, yeah. that's very impressive. Seven touchdown passes now in the season for Bunbury. As our GMC kicks for college, Michael Johnson on for the fifth time tonight. They scored three times on that drive, by the way. Yeah, <laughs> Two third time's back. a charm, right? Yeah. yeah. Well, there we go. Gamecocks with the point after make it 35 to nothing. We'll keep it right here since we only have a minute and seven seconds left to play here in uh, the first half. Around the area tonight, Glen Hills leads Josie six nothing. Evans, that's the one that's a big surprise. That Evans Baldwin game thought to be kind of a tight matchup, and Evans is absolutely making a statement. 45 nothing Knights. In the third quarter, didn't weren't sure how they were going to respond after that tough loss last week in Sanders. Though. They lost 49-48 in overtime to Washington County, and Baldwin beat Washington County the previous week, and now Evans up. I tell you one thing, Evans has. They've got a high-powered offense. Demika Taylor at quarterback, Corey Watkins at running back, Rashawn Willis at receiver. They've got a high-powered offense. Easy region, easy region. North Augusta yeah. started to pull away from Strom Thurmond now, 22 to seven. That's in the third. Again, we have games that are in the fourth quarter around the area. Yeah, Fox not even Creek. Half -time. Fox Creek up 26 to, is that 18 or 13? 13. 13 over Midland Valley yeah. in the fourth. That's going to be a nice win for Fox Creek. Midland Valley, I don't know what happened to them after that great performance against Strom. They got throttled last week by Silver Bluff, and now they're losing to Fox Creek. 35 to nothing, Scraven County leads Laney. Back deep to receive for the Wildcats. A little confusion back there, but it will eventually be taken by Rashad Williams. He's got a little bit of room to run. He'll bring it up to about 30, across the 30, 34-yard line. Uh, <clears throat> flag down. Rinse, rinse and repeat. 
Well, folks, guess what we have tonight? A lot of flags? <laughs> nope. We have our first final. <laughs> 29 nothing Grovetown over Richmond. Your first final of the night. Uh, and we are yet to go to halftime. You're killing me. <laughs> killing me. Killing me, Small. <laughs> By the way, you can catch all these scores and highlights uh, on Football Friday Night with uh, Nate. Which may, and Zach. may, is, 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 may already it. be on the air. Well, on a return. Yeah, I was going to say, we might do yards. Football Friday Night Live. Yeah. <laughs> they could check in on the game. It goes against the Wildcats. Now, nah, they do a great job with that show. Check it out, 1135 WJVF News Channel 6 with scores and highlights from around the area. Nobody dedicates 30 minutes uh, to high school football but WJVF. The Wildcats will start from their 22. They have 57.6 seconds left here in the first half. And it'll be interesting to see if Coach McFadden decides to be aggressive and try to get on the board or if they just are content to go into the locker room without any further damage. It looks like they're going to be aggressive, but the ball is thrown behind Jordan Stringer. Hey, Stringer, the freshman, admonishing the quarterback, hey, throw it to the sidelines. I'm trying to catch it and get out of bounds. Tell you, I remember that name, Jordan Stringer. He's going to be a good one. Clock and he's right. The pass not in the right spot. Clock stopped with 54.2 seconds left. Mario Sumter, we did a an, another terrific student athlete. Talk about Nick Clifton earlier from Screven. Five wide for the Cats this time. Sumter in trouble, and he'll be run out of bounds at the 22-yard line. No gain. Coming up at halftime, we'll run down some scores from around the area. We'll have to let you listen in to the uh, in case you didn't hear them the first 30 we times. We might be, be giving college scores. <laughs> <laughs> Saturday scores. <laughs> we'll hear from the Laney Marching Band. Uh, we've got a nice little feature on Laney High School as we do our weekly high school spotlight. 49.3 seconds left until that. And that passes out to Jay Graham, and he doesn't have any room to run. He is hit hard by Gary Hawkins. And Shreven County calls timeout. Ron Duncan hoping to get the ball back with some time left. Wow. They're 43.7 seconds with the clock stopped. They picked up one on that. So it'll be fourth and nine. So, yeah, Gamecocks with two timeouts left will have probably about 40 seconds, and they'll... You know, if all goes according to plan here, probably have the ball around midfield. Well, can't fault the coach for that. No. Screven County trying to improve to 4-0. and Last year, again, they were 11-2 and on the season. Laney was a playoff team as well. Started yeah. the year 0-5, but won five straight games to end the regular season before losing in the opening round of the playoffs. Well, if Laney needs any motivation, all they have to do is look at the uh, – I was reading the other day about the – North Augusta team back in the day that started 0 and 6 and went on to win a 1989 state championship. So it 1989, can, Craig can Hamburg, the quarterback on that team, and buddy of mine, Happy Greenway, was the tight end on that squad. Went yeah. on to play uh, some college ball. Yeah, they were uh, that North Augusta team. You're right; it was funny. They did play a tough schedule early, and matter of fact, played Evans, mm -hmm. uh, played Evans, and some other teams around the area and lost. And then they got it together and got hot at the right time. Snap is clean. Kick is away. And the Gamecocks are going to return it with Hunter. Hunter across the 40, the 30, and inside the 30. To, oh, he's still on his feet inside the 20-yard line, but uh, flagged out. The official, has, if you add it all up, I believe has had more airtime in this game than <laughs> I had, did all week on News Channel 6 at 530. And that's a piece of paper. That's a piece of paper. We're yeah. good. <laughs> oh, what a oh, flag. flag. All piece of right. Piece of paper. We're good. Applause, everyone. <laughs> so it'll be, it'll be <laughs> Screven County ball at the Laney 17-yard line with 28.3 seconds left. And now, now we have the flag. I knew it was coming eventually. I just didn't know when. <laughs> Free up to strike by John, <laughs> John Hart. I'm a little ahead of myself. Oh, man. That official is going to have a sore elbow. Yes, sir. <laughs> <laughs> Referee elbow. Never heard of it. <laughs> but 
motion himself. penalty on Scrabbing <laughs> County. And you know, or I should we, say we, on Laney, it's declined. Yeah, we're joking. You can't, but you can't fault him. He's no. just calling what he's seeing. Yeah. So it'll be first and ten as the procedure penalty is declined. And with 27.3 seconds left. Ah, terrible feedback in the station. That's not us, folks. That is something going on here at the old ballpark. Now it appears that they fixed it. Sorry about that. So from the 18-yard line, Bunbury looking in trouble. Escapes three men. How did he get out of that? To 15 and all the way down to the 10-yard line. He should have been thrown for a three-yard loss, A.B. How did he get away? Clock ticking now, 15 seconds, 14 he seconds. He tried to get out of bounds, but yeah. he was ruled in, ruled his knee down. But how did he get out of this? This is amazing. Woo. 14 seconds left. And Watch him dive at the end of the play, trying, trying to get, out, to get of out of bounds. Just could not quite get there. So Gamecocks will take uh, their second timeout with 14 seconds left. And now, with only one timeout left, you can still run once if you want to. Yeah. Uh, you still have that in your still have that option. Our Napleton Infinity timeout. Yep. So Napleton Infinity of Augusta. Yes. Gonna end up being a seven yard gain on that uh, last play. Also at the half, we will talk a little bit about uh, the other matchups from around the area. We'll talk about uh, I don't know, we'll find something. We, I'm reminded from the truck of my 5 a.m. wake-up call to head to Athens tomorrow. Nathan's telling me the average starting field position for Screven County in this game, they've had a ton of possessions, the Laney 41. Mm. It's good work if you can get it. They've had 10 possessions. So wow. second and three with 14.6 seconds left. Again, Screven County does have the one timeout. Yeah, they could take a shot here and then call timeout like you well, completely stop the clock. Or they could they could run it twice. And you have right in the backfield. They're going to elect to throw. Oh, Bunbury right. pressured and going to get rid of it too, right? Oh, Very good, dangerous. Good and right will we'll, uh, fall on it. Five seconds left, and they'll have to call their last timeout right there. And so the Gamecocks will have one more shot at it at best. Yeah, Bunbury trying to make something happen there and just shuttled it forward. They said incomplete, so they dropped. did not have to call the timeout, I believe. Yeah, They're going to say incomplete. He yeah, he dropped it. Oh, he did, and yeah, it bounced so right back into his hands. I was wondering why C.J. Wright didn't look like he ran hard there, and it's because he knew the ball was incomplete. Yeah. Uh, in so, the Augusta okay. Technical yeah, College, College red, red zone. zone. They're going to kick a field goal. Looks like Michael Johnson's yeah, on the field. Yeah, with just five seconds left. Why not? Johnson's been perfect tonight on five extra points. Uh, this one's going to be... About a 28-yarder. Georgia Military College kicks for college off the foot of Michael Johnston. And now the flag flies in from the top of your screen. Well, mm. it's going to be a 23-yarder. Mm. Yep. He's on own defense. Going that way. Well. Yeah, I was going to say, they caught Off, it on the defense. Offsides right? yeah. on the Wildcats, or uh, yeah, on the Wildcats. Man. Oh, they're not, oh they, Matt's saying, yeah, they're, they're now pulling that, the kicking team that, off. After that, they're going to pull the kicking team off, and with the ball just outside the five-yard line and 5.2 ticks left, they're going to take a shot at it. So here we go with Bunbury at quarterback. So Bunbury out of the gun. First and seven, that gave him a first down. Bunbury, three seconds, two seconds, one second, throwing, complete. Did he get in? No, and the half ends just like that. Mm, mm, mm. Well, risky call by Ron Duncan, and the Gamecocks come up one yard short. Laney has something positive going to the locker room. I guess they stopped him there. Speaking of Coach Ron Duncan, he is down on the sidelines with Matt Lane and another Augusta Auto Auction sideline report. Matt. Hey John, Coach Duncan, uh, first half really start and stop, you know, kind of with the weather delay and then a lot of flags in the first quarter. What were your thoughts uh, first quarter? I know you're up fairly large on the scoreboard, but how did you feel the first half went for you? Well, we, we, we played sloppy, and we, we committed a bunch of penalties, obviously. It looked like flag day out there, but um, <laughs> we got a lot to clean up, a lot to work on. 
Uh, second half, what are you going to tell your team to kind of get them reengaged for a full second half of football? Well, we just got to come out and play our style of football and, and take control of the second half. We always come out and you know preach to our kids at halftime. You know, first five minutes, second half, most important, and uh, want to come out. You know, get used to coming out of the locker room and setting the tempo. Thank you, Coach. Thank you. All right, Coach Ron Duncan. Uh, it, <laughs> Made a good point. We didn't think of that one. It was like flag day out there in the first half. <laughs> yeah, it, it, it was. Uh, man, interesting half, interesting half. A lot happening there. Yeah, well, we will come back with the halftime show after this. We'll talk about that first half, get you updated on the other scores around the area, and listen into the Laney Wildcat Marching Band. All that's coming up right after this. Your score at halftime is Screven County Gamecocks 35, the Laney Wildcats 0. It's halftime on Game Night Live. 